is Tallulah and this is my vlog and my kitchen and my mission to save the world one sandwich at a time. And Lulu, bonjour Lulu. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today's question is all about how does one sustain oneself throughout a very challenging, seems like never ending struggle. Well, let me tell you, darling, how you sustain yourself is with hope, love and kindness. And that is not just a bumper sticker. That is not something I've just read and repeating for some hippie commune up to Panga Canyon. No, I have been in a refugee camp for this last little while. That's why I've been off air. I've been with the Sahrawi people who have been in this refugee camp for 41 years. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very true. They've been out in the desert. And I don't know how many of you have been to the Sahara, but it is an unforgiving landscape. There's no oasis in sight. Well, there was a palm tree, but, but the part of, apart from the one or two palm trees, there was tumbleweed. So there is nothing that grows there, ladies and gentlemen. And one can imagine, one, well, I saw it, so one doesn't have to imagine in my case, but the beating down of the sun, the wind whipping up the sand, it is a harsh environment. And these people, due to no fault of their own, due to a very difficult political situation involving the Western Sahara and Morocco, they have been cast out on the desert for 41 years. I'm going to let that sink in because that's a very long time. I mean, I was living with a family there. My host mother, a wonderful woman called Varda, was 28 years old. She was born in the camp. So that's all she's known. So darling, that is a sustained struggle for sure. For, there's no bones about that, darling. Talk about a few bad weeks. This is a few bad decades of people to get through. But the thing that's amazing, the thing that one can learn, to, the, the hope that people have, and you can see it in their eyes, darling. People are still very hopeful, very kind. Nobody's lost their humanity throughout all this. I mean, here this family were taking in me, two Swiss people and another, and an American woman, so four of us, taken into the bosom of this family served tea immediately and the tea is a wonderful ceremony darling if you ever are in Africa hopefully one will be no, you, hopefully you're being served sweet tea because if you're served tea that isn't sweet that means you're not very welcome so that's the subtle hint on that fortunately we had very sweet tea uh, so anyway we had the tea and it absolutely brought into the family so much so darling I'm gonna give you this anecdote the first night we were sleeping you know, it, on a mat in this little room. And I went out to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. I meet the family sleeping outside on mats outside. Uh, so when I stepped outside, my host woman, Varda, woke up and immediately asked me if I was all right, if I needed anything, and came through, helped me with the bathroom light, because obviously I knew nothing about it. Toad never normally been in the Sahara. And um, the, the level of generosity and kindness is absolutely second to none. And so you really think that the ability of the human spirit ladies and gentlemen, to get through any struggle is unsurmountable, it's vast. And you have that within yourself, that's how you feel. You feel, wow, these people, no matter what their struggle is, they can still handle it. And with dignity and with grace, ladies and gentlemen, there was a real sense of uh, harm, harmoniousness. And I mean, I mean, the whole entire family, there's lots of children, lots of people sharing a very small space and everyone got on. I mean, we even played football. I even played football that sort of went into volleyball when the ball came to me. But you know, basically I did manage to get rid of the ball. You'll be happy to know. I'm, I'm not normally a footballer. Just put that out there. Anyway, I had to deal with my own hardship when I was there, obviously. Uh, there were things that went wrong, like my bag didn't turn up. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I arrive in a military base, told that my bag is not with us. Ce n'est pas avec nous, avec vous, avec moi. Uh, but, you know, I managed to hold it together. Partly because you obviously you're seeing other people dealing with a much different, and I will say that, it is a harder situation that they are in than, than me losing my bag for a few days. And it is. Uh, you'll be glad to know I still had my lipstick on me though, and my hat. So one can do a lot with a hat and a lipstick. Without those, I may have been more challenged. Uh, but, you know, but the thing is about going through any struggle, it is within us. That's what one gets from the situation. And if, if I mean, I can't, in fact, I'm going to leave the links in the below because it'd be really good if you could see the pictures because I don't know whether you were imagining the desert as I am seeing it. And it is absolutely vast. So you do feel that you are stuck, you are marooned there. It's almost like an ocean of sand. It's almost like being, you know, you can see nothing but sand for miles and miles and miles. And the, you are stuck. I mean, that is a pickle to be in, darling, it really is. If pickle doesn't cover it, I have to say. I know Shakespeare invented that phrase and it's good for a lot of things, but this, is, this surpasses pickle. You are, you are in a serious bind. And um, my heart goes out and my hat goes off 
literally it did a few times in the sandstorms. Um, but you know, that is entirely inspirational to whatever we are going through in our lives. We can get through it, we can, with a seriously good attitude. And um, I'm not going to give a sandwich today, uncharacteristically, because I've given food for thought. How's that as a metaphor? And stick that in your sandwich pipe to smoke it. Uh, and there we go. I'm going to leave links in a bit below because Javier Bardem went to this festival, Fee Sahara, and he did a fantastic documentary. So if you're interested, I would say watch it. You will be a better person for it. And that is a fact. Yours and Feathers, Tallulah. Aw, they made you soft, Tallulah. Darling, a little bit. Once you have braved a very difficult situation and looked into the eyes of one has to, anyway, listen, I hope that isn't mocked. Hope you're not mocking me behind there, Holster. Just with you and your flip flops. There's a lot of mileage for you to be mocked. I'm just there. still trying to picture you in the desert. I, well, I was, darling. I was there. There is fact. I know, but the thing is, darling, I think you were out of your comfort zone. You sort of become a different person. Sort of Tallulah of the desert is not the same as Tallulah of Hollywood, that's for sure. But uh, there's many facets to a person's life and that's, you know, yes. If the thing, when you are trying to get a Nobel Peace Prize, you have to open the box. And I opened the box, darling. So there it is. Oh, yeah, there, there it is. You have to take it to the streets.